and ably filling in as, as Mr. Whitman is the ranking member, and I will yield to him for his opening statement. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I deeply appreciate our witnesses coming to testify before us today, and thanks so much for your service. General Townsend, as was discussed last week, the threats in Africa are multifaceted, and they continue to grow. Uh, but spending on AFRICOM comprises only about three-tenths of one percent of the entire defense budget, not related to the magnitude of what I believe is the building threat. And it's these meager resources that are now spread even thinner because of the challenges we face before us with Russia and China. And that's not just worldwide, that's specifically there on the African continent. Russia has been entering into a disturbing number of arms sales and basing agreements in African nations. China is using the Belt and Road Initiative to extract African national, natural, natural resources and gain permanent footholds on the continent. The Chinese have built an overseas military base in the strategically important area of the Horn of Africa, and they're actively scouting other locations, including the Atlantic coast. Make no mistake about their intentions. The growing presence of China and Russia in Africa is a threat to our national security, and it's imperative that we increase investments there as well as other places around the world. I look forward to hearing from you, General Townsend, about how we can maximize diplomatic and military efforts to counter Russia and China's growing global ambitions in China. In CENTCON, General McKenzie, we're also seeing increased Chinese presence. China's building ports and other infrastructure throughout the region, and it's entered into trade and telecom agreements with allies in the region. But what I find most concerning is that President Xi continues to cozy up to the Ayatollah. China signed valuable trade deals with Iran, bought Iranian oil in defiance of international sanctions, and joined Russia in conducting joint dr drills with the Iranian Navy. These actions provide a lifeline to Iran at a very dangerous time. The Ayatollah continues to fund and equip terrorists targeting American troops. His cronies are prolonging a civil war and a humanitarian crisis in Syria. And his regime is aggressively pursuing nuclear weapons. We absolutely cannot allow this to happen. I do not believe that re-entering the JCPOA will stop them. I look forward to hearing more about the administration's plan for ending the Ayatollah's quest for a nuclear weapon and how they intend to deal with the rest of the regime's destabilizing actions. Finally, to both you, General McKenzie, and General Townsend, you continue to face tremendous challenges snuffing, snuffing out hardened terrorists in both ARs, and I'm very concerned that we are backsliding on the progress we've made in combating terrorism. In Africa, the repositioning of U.S. and French forces further from terrorist hotspots is making it much harder for us to successfully conduct counterterrorism operations. In CENTCOM, President Biden's decision to unilaterally and unconditionally withdraw all U.S. forces from Afghanistan has undermined our national security. <coughs> As anticipated by nearly everyone except the president, the Taliban has overrun the government and Afghanistan is reverting back to being a breeding ground for terrorists. The president assures us that this so-called over-the-horizon strategy will prevent that from happening. But this is completely devoid of reality. In the six months since, since the withdrawal, we have not been informed of a single successful over-the-horizon strike. I guess it's possible that al-Qaeda and ISIS-K have thrown down their arms and decided to live in peaceful coexistence with the West. But I fear what's more likely is that we no longer have a good handle on where the terrorists are or what they're doing. The truth is, without persistent ISR, reliable partners on the ground, and nearby facilities to launch assets, we lack the capability we need to conduct a successful strike. We know previously human intelligence, signal intelligence, in theater, close to the adversary, is critically important. And I look forward to this afternoon's classified discussion on what capabilities we've lost and how we can help restore them. As to our posture shifts in the Indo-Pacific, we need to ensure other combatant commanders we have the capabilities they need to carry out their missions. We cannot allow for blind spots, especially in your two AORs. Before I wrap up, I'd like to thank both of you for your service, General Townsend, General McKenzie, incredible service to our nation. Uh, General McKenzie, I wish you the best in your retirement. Uh, just make sure that you uh, have your number available on speed dial. <laughs> and again, Mr. Chairman, I thank you, and I yield back.